look at this guys look at this evaporator that's that's an evaporator man that's insane this video is brought to you by sportland quality integrity and tradition We got a call on a kitchen AC. They're actually saying they got two ACs for their kitchen and they were saying that yesterday their kitchen was reading like 90 degrees at the thermostats and it was hot. And there was a funny smell. Um, so we're gonna dive into this guy. I come up here, uh, I know this is hard because this dang Prodigy board is difficult for you guys to read, but it says cooling and it's scrolling. I've got a first and second stage call and a fan call, no issues. So. I'm just doing a visual inspection, seeing if I see anything funky going on. Let's check in the indoor blower motor. I think it's vibrating to all hell, but it's running. I'm not seeing anything jumping out at me. Filters look pretty beat. No, well, not too bad, I guess. Um, Okay. Condenser fan motors are both running. Condenser is dirty, but it doesn't look horrible. Interesting, okay. So I'm gonna jump into the Prodigy controller and see if it shows any error messages. Something funky's going on here because we have first and second stage call, but this compressor just shut off, but we don't got an error message on here. Theoretically, it could be the economizer, but huh, I don't care so much for these older Prodigy boards because they are a little difficult to decipher what's going on here. I'm uh, pulling the filters out and the filters are plugged on this guy. There is low pressure cuts, but they're like plugged solid. You can't even see light through those. Let's see if I can barely anything through those things. So yeah, that's not good. The evaporator doesn't look the greatest either. I'm not gonna be able to show that to you right now. Um, but I was just talking to my service tech because I have another guy here doing a preventative maintenance while we were here and he said when he walked up that this exhaust fan, the belt was shredded on it. So it wasn't running. That kind of answers some questions because the manager had said it smelt kind of like something was burning in the kitchen. And the AC's working I thought maybe we had a bad indoor blower motor on the AC, but the exhaust fan was down. So this is a pretty critical exhaust fan for the restaurant. So they just didn't realize they had a whole exhaust fan down. So we're still gonna go through the AC though. I couldn't catch it on camera, but this compressor came on for a minute and then it turned off, it short cycled. And then it said uh, low pressure compressor number two. So we need to get service gauges on this, but I first need to, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and power it down and we're gonna inspect this evaporator coil and get into this guy and see what's going on here. I have a feeling it's gonna be dirty. I mean, it's not as bad as I thought it would be. I know it's probably a li oh yeah, there's some chunkers in there for sure. Yeah, yeah, lots of chunkers. All right, I ended up just pulling the side. And look at this, guys. Look at this evaporator. That's, that's an evaporator, man. That's insane. So, that would certainly cause low pressure, but I don't think that's the issue. Knowing this is a Linux unit, I bet you anything we have a bad TXV for the second stage right there. But we're gonna go ahead and clean this evaporator first. We'll give the condenser a rinse too. I'm pretty sure the condenser is clean, but we're gonna give it a rinse and we're gonna properly clean this evap and brush it down. I ended up going to get a vacuum because mine was broken. Um, I ended up pulling the economizer out at a couple plugs, a couple screws. We're gonna start vacuuming some of that evap, the big stuff off, and then we'll brush it. I got some brushes too. Let's see if we can get some airflow on this bad boy. So I put these down to keep dust from going inside. This stuff's pretty caked on, so it's not really, I'm gonna have to get the brush on it. It's pretty dried on. I'm just gonna get what I can off with the vacuum, and then uh, we'll start brushing, and we'll just let it fall down onto here. Get this stuff too. Yeah, that comes off nice and easy. Try to get as much dust as you can out. Unfortunately, no customer is going to pay for a preventative maintenance that's going to pull these economizers out and stuff like that. So this is just something you're going to have to do on these units every couple years. Nobody has the money to budget for four hours of tearing down one unit. I mean, restaurant stone, I should say. So it's more on a reactive kind of a basis. All right, time to get in there with the brush.
I don't know how well that'll work, but we taped it off. Try to keep water from getting in the ducts. We're gonna have to spray this down with cleaner, so. I peeled off as much as I could and then we're taking super concentrated blue venom pack and just spraying it on there and letting it foam up. We're gonna have to rinse it here in a sec. I'm just doing a small area right now to see if it actually works. Cause uh, this is insane. This stuff is just like hard solid grease. It's actually working really well. I uh, put the plastic down so I just hit it. And uh, wherever I sprayed, that stuff is coming right off. So that's cool. Hopefully it's not going down in the duct. But look at that stuff coming out the drain pan. Nasty. Now I am using the, the coil cleaner, the blue venom pack. And it's very, uh, this one right here. I'm using this. And it's very, uh, has an interesting smell to it. So you got to be really careful that customers aren't going to get overtaken by the smell or something like that. Um, but yeah, so far so good. So we're going to go ahead and do the rest of the coil with the blue stuff.
about as clean as it's gonna get. I can see right through the coil, looking good. It's not as nasty anymore, all the way back into there, looking good. So we're gonna give it one more rinse, and then we're gonna put some evaporator coil cleaner and then some sanitizer on it. Using the green evap cleaner now, pump this up, and we're just gonna give this guy a thorough rinse, let it get in all the spots, and then uh, spray some sanitizer and put the unit back together and figure out what else is wrong. I have a feeling we're gonna have a bad TXV, so. I got the strike back sanitizer now. Just spray it on the surface and leave it there. You're not gonna rinse it. Just get it all over there. Just for peace of mind for the whole virus thing and let's get it all over that guy. Do it on the other side too. And any of the surfaces that you're touching to, you can basically back your way out of the unit and clean everything. Just pulled the plastic off. No water got down in the duct, so super cool. So hard for you guys to see but there's a damper down there that is closed we'll have to look into that i vacuumed as far as i could reach i can't reach all the way down there but yeah there's a damper straight down so we'll have to see if we can't get to that from the bottom side but this guy's all clean i'm going to vacuum this real quick and then we're going to start reassembling it and start this unit up We are back together. We're gonna have to get them some metal mesh filters, but everything's reassembled, the back's on. Drain pan actually has a crack in it, so we're gonna talk to him about replacing that. Um, it rinsed around the unit. We're gonna go ahead and power it on. Uh, the blower assembly needs to be pulled and cleaned, but that's not what I'm here for. I know you guys can't see it, but it's just in its startup process. It's got a call for G. The indoor blower's running. Okay, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and gauge up and we're gonna see what's going on with that other compressor. This damn thing is rattling. This unit has just a slight rattle to it. And this, this thing keeps rattling on me. Okay, um, compressor number two. We're running low refrigerant pressures. It looks like subcoin's non-existent. So to me, it's probably gonna be a low charge issue. But before we go crazy with that, we're gonna find the liquid dryer and check for a pressure drop across the dryer. Um, Here's the expansion valve. Yeah, we got a hot section line. Barely anything flowing through the valve. So, um, we do have a pressure port right here, so I guess we could theoretically check that. But it sounds like it's low charge to me. Um, everything looks fine in here. Okay, we'll open this guy up because I had the other condenser side off and it didn't look like there was any refrigerant leaks But we'll open this one up and see I don't need to get a temperature clamp. I can just I feel uh, that's a bunch of crap out of my hand But I felt both sides of the filter dryer um, There's no temperature differential across that So we're gonna get some refrigerant and add a little refrigerant and see how it reacts to that All right, I put I don't even not even a pound of gas in it and it's reacting well I just wanted to make sure it wasn't an expansion valve that was stuck shut or something uh so with that being said, we're gonna go ahead and power down the unit and do a leak check real quick and see if we can't find something before we go too crazy. I did a quick visual and I don't see anything in here. Really quickly looked. I mean, nothing jumping out at me. Uh, nothing in here. Heck, I don't even see anything over here. My second stage is right here. And I had the other side off and I looked at it, I didn't see anything. Probably should have leak checked the evaporator when I had the cover off, but I didn't know yeah, who knows, oh well. Um, so let's go ahead and hit this guy. Just run the, oh geez. Wow, already, going crazy. On the zero. Well, that was easy. Um, first place I checked, go figure. All right, and yeah, let's get some big blue on here. So we're gonna get right up in here. Remember when you spray the big blue, you want a steady stream. Oh yeah, it's a big leak. Really big leak. Look at that. It's right on the spot where the suction line runs over that. That is weird. Yeah, that's, that's probably, it's, 
probably the vibration. Oh, that sucks. It's like right up in there, rubbing through. Huh. All right, I'm gonna pop the top a little bit and get a better look at it. Well, there it is. And it rubbed against the big suction line, but it doesn't, I, I put bubbles on the suction line. Suction line doesn't look like it's ruptured, so we'll uh, we'll definitely put a braze joint on the suction line too where it rubbed through, but cool. Well, that was an easy leak to find. Um, now the question is, do I need to quote this? Technically supposed to. Let me make some phone calls. All right, I got approval to fix it. So we recovered just under three pounds of gas, and I think this thing probably holds like nine or something like that, so it was pretty low. Um, we're gonna go ahead and kind of prop the top up as best as possible, change the dryer, fix the leak, try to knock this out as fast as possible. I've shown this before, but I take these fitting brushes, my supply house has them, these guys right here, and I cut the end off of them, put them in the drill, and they do really good to get into those really tight spots right there. Now, this is gonna be a problem because it's worn the copper down so much, I would not be the least bit surprised if it flares open because it's so thin right there. So I'm gonna have to braise it very carefully, trying to keep it from opening up because that hole basically will just flare open. And then the bottom side of this is gonna be a pain in the butt to braise on, but we'll get it. Okay, let's see if we can get this thing up. wet towels all right this all stuff has to come off I'm always afraid of that thing lighting up all right let's see a wet towel here yeah okay, we're gonna put one right down here trying to keep all this stuff from catching on fire See what I did there? Do that bubble on. But instead of heating up that joint, Bring a little bit up here just for giggles. Okay, that's good. Now I'm gonna step over here. Plenty of solder. I just got the solder to stick on there. Get that uh, spot, it's burning the towel. There you go. I think that might be good. Let me do a visual inspection. See if that. Got it. Mirror is missing. Or my flashlight, yeah. 
Thank you. Yeah, I got it. Yep, all right, cool. So we laid a bead right on that guy, a big old fat bead. And then we laid a bead right on that fitting. All right, go ahead and pull it. Well, it didn't take me long to figure out I forgot a joint, so I brazed that real quick. Now I'm gonna finish the vacuum. We ain't getting all crazy with the vacuum today either. We're pulling through the manifold. So I've told people there's times when I do it. So, you know, I prefer to use my big fancy setup, but not today. I've got this rubber material that I use for door sweeps for walk-in freezers, and it works really good when you have vibrating lines or anything like that. So it doesn't look the prettiest, but I just zip tied the rubber there so that way if it does vibrate, it's not gonna, you know, it'll, it'll at least have that little barrier. So we're gonna go ahead and start putting the top back together. Um, yeah, we're getting there. All right, just finished the vacuum. Pulled it down to about 900 microns. It's about as low as we're getting today. Again, I'm not always perfect, guys. Uh, this guy's calling for 14 pounds, eight ounces. Uh, this guy's open. We're gonna open it up. Going in through the high side. Just gonna let it go. Let's go over here. We're charging the second stage. 14 pounds, eight ounces. All right, we're still charging, but I could do a leak check real quick. We got about five pounds of gas in the system. Nothing there. And then we'll come in here. Double check right up here where we had leaks. Nothing there. Kind of hard for you guys to see in there. We're good. Okay, let it keep charging. Okay, we are running. Lennox says we should be running about, uh, it's, it's, it's about 112, so we're gonna call it 115. So Lennox says about 514 and 150. Eh, we're there a little bit. Now we are pulling a little bit of outside air, um, and I still need to fix that damper, but that's not gonna happen today. So this is looking pretty good. See, there's no latent load. 20 degree split, but it's also pulling outside air. 85 degree return air. That could be some building air too, because it's pretty hot in there. Um, 65 degree supply. I'd like to see that drop down. We need to put our gauges on the first stage and see how that one's operating. Uh, sub cooling's high, but remember we're using discharge line pressure, so that's kind of a messed up metric there. Um, See what we got. We got a three degree approach. Approach temperature less indicates an overcharge. Well, we don't have an overcharge. We're just gonna let it run for a bit. Um, I'm gonna gauge up on the second stage, or first stage. A little bit lower in pressures. Um, let's see what my sub point's about 16 on that one. 18 degrees superheat. Before I go too much further with this, I'm not gonna mess too much with it. Um, I want to fix that open damper, closed damper. We're going to leave this be for now. It seems like this is, I, I'm coming across this more and more with this whole COVID thing going on because the restaurants aren't doing preventative maintenance, you know? Um, and I, I mean, I can't blame them. It's still frustrating, but because, you know, a call that could have been a refrigerant leak turned into a seven hour day because I had to completely disassemble the AC you know, degrease the evaporator like no tomorrow and put it back together. But I got to say, man, the, the Viper blue cleaner kicked ass. All right. Um, that stuff, I mean, you're not really supposed to use it on an evaporator, but it did a great job cleaning off all that gunk. I still had to brush it and stuff too, but you got to make sure you rinse that stuff down really good. Okay. Really good. Um, took care of that, put the unit back together. I would have loved to have cleaned the blower assembly, but I wasn't there for that. Uh, I have not gone back and adjusted the, um, the damper yet, but we will excuse the Coke nose. Um, we will, when we go back and do, uh, finish the preventative maintenance, cause I had someone there doing the PM too. So we'll get that taken care of. Um, I did put in a spoiling catch all and I liked, I didn't, I didn't really address this, but as I was editing it, I need to point it out. I like to oversize my dryers. I like to go back in with a 16 cubic inch, uh, you know, to make sure that, that we have enough uh, cleaning capacity, essentially, okay? So that way the dryer doesn't get plugged up. A lot of times on these Linux units, they come with like a 053, a five cubic inch, 
or even an eight cubic inch, but I like to go back in with a 16 whenever possible. Um, or, you know, just the biggest that I can get on those units, but you got to make sure that you support them. Um, the support that I use wasn't like the best thing in the world, but the old dryer clamp from the old Emerson dryer, I was able to get it on the bottom of the Spoilin dryer and then be able to still screw it into the side of the AC condenser. So that way, um, it's supported. Uh, went ahead and pulled in a vacuum on the unit and everything else pretty much checked out okay. And, and oh, and that's the other thing too. You guys saw how I took that rubber membrane material. Now, that's just a rubber material I get from Case Parts Company. It's a door sweep material. Um, I don't even remember what the part number is, but if you open up a Case Parts catalog, you'll see it. Just look under walk-in hardware and it's like it comes in like a... a a 16 foot roll or something um, and it's just like basically 16th of an inch thick rubber uh, it has a lot of purposes obviously it's meant to be used for a door sweep but uh, we use it to wrap lines that might rub together or something like that just like I did in that situation you don't got to get super crazy I just put some zip ties on it you know and then that way if it ever did vibrate or rub up against something again we're hoping that it would rub through the rubber before it rubbed a hole in the copper essentially okay so um, in the future I'd love to get in there and uh, pull that blower assembly out but again it wasn't bad enough um, I was able to fix the vibration uh, I'm sorry I was able to move the the suction line so that way it's not going to rub up against anything and uh, you know we'll bring it up to the customer well actually I mean I did tell them there was a vibration but you know they only want to fix really what's broken right now um, but I had to clean it to be able to diagnose it so that's how I got away with that one um, yeah, that's it. Really, really appreciate you guys making it to the end. If you guys haven't already, please consider supporting the channel. There's a couple different ways that you can. Uh, the easiest way um, is to simply watch the videos and watch the commercials, guys. If you watch the commercials, it greatly helps me so much. I know it sucks sometimes, but yeah, that's a really easy way to just watch the commercials. Um, you can become a Patreon patron, okay? You can, you know, uh, donate to the channel essentially. Uh, you can donate through uh, PayPal or Streamlabs. Um, you can become a YouTube channel member. Uh, I also have merch available at HVACRvideos.com, hats and shirts. And soon we're going to have zip up hoodies and beanies. I'm still working on those. The first batch of samples on the beanies uh, didn't pass my approval. So we're not going to go with that uh, manufacturer, but we have another one coming out right now with a couple other samples. So hopefully I'll get those soon and we'll have uh, zip up hoodies and beanies on there too. Okay. Really, really appreciate you guys. Remember I do live streams Monday evenings, 5 PM Pacific on YouTube work permitting as long as I can get off in time, uh, pay attention and make sure you guys hit that subscription bell on my channel. I've been doing a lot more of the live streams, the live stream service calls. Um, so pay attention for that. And Friday evenings, about 6.05 p.m. Uh, Pacific time, usually I go live on the HVAC Overtime YouTube channel. If you guys haven't already, go check out that channel. Just search HVACR uh, Overtime on YouTube. Uh, subscribe to that. Myself, uh, Joe, HVACR North, Adam, A Team Adam, and Bill, Curious HVAC Guy. We go live and we just kind of have a, a nice hangout show where we just talk about the week and stuff. So. Uh, hopefully we'll see you over there and uh, yeah, that's it for this one. We will catch you on the next one Okay, audio sync <laughs> Oh shit, that was making funny noises. All right, shut it so I can record